In today's video on how to build your food truck 2.0 with me, Frank Baltiers, we're gonna be installing the electrical SO cable, which is your main electrical cable right here, to the generator inlet box. It comes in these two little pieces where you plug in your generator right there. We're gonna make a plug for it as well. Not on this video, but we will make a plug for it that feeds everything inside your new food truck or your new food trailer that way you can get everything up and running, being your fridge, your lights, um, your, your exhaust fan. This is what powers everything up right here. I'm gonna show you how to hook that up right now. All right, so what we're gonna be using for our gener generator inlet box is this one by the brand called Reliance. Uh, it's a little bit harder to find right now. I ordered this one last time that I ordered the other one because I, I, I was seeing that they were out of stock constantly, so I ordered two of them. This one is a little bit on the higher price side. I don't know, maybe just because of supply and demand, but if you can find the Reliance plug, being the category number, the part number is PB50. I'll link it here in the description. That is the one that I like. I use it quite often uh, because it handles 50 amps, and that's what you typically want to use is a 50 amp plug. This one's made to do 120 or 240. Here on this food truck, we're just gonna wire it up to be 120 because we don't have, well, I won't be using any equipment that has 240. Sometimes, typically, uh, some people that use electrical cooking equipment, that will use 240, but that's just a little bit of the different wiring. Same setup, right? Same cable that you have here, just a different setup. I have a six gauge SO cable that I ran underneath the, the trailer I have a previous video that I did for that where I show you how I ran it under my trailer and you can do it like under your truck or something like that and then it goes up to the other side and it feeds your breaker panel where that branches off and it'll feed all the outlets and switches that we'll get to on the next videos coming up but if you're new to the channel welcome if you have been here for quite some time thanks again I do appreciate the loyalty and the follows and all the comments that you guys make you guys are awesome but for now we're gonna take the unit bit right here and we're gonna be drilling a hole somewhere in between this general area. It doesn't have to be anywhere exact. I just want it to be down here. So I'm gonna drill a, a hole there with my unit bit. And this right here is going to be just wide enough so this six gauge SO cable can fit right there. So let me drill it. It's gonna get a little noisy, but hang in there with me. Metal shavings get hot. Be careful with that. Almost there. So that's how we drill the hole. I'm just gonna be cleaning it up, make, letting it uh, cool down a little bit because the metal is gonna be hot. So that's how we're gonna run this SO cable right there. And then I'm gonna be able to put this box right there and then I'm gonna secure it with stainless, stainless steel screws that I have here. I'll link these in the description as well. Uh, I'm gonna be skinning this wire back with my Milwaukee um, utility knife, I guess you wanna call it. I have, to, I have to actually get new blades for it, which I did, so I have to refill it real quick. But that's what I'm gonna be using. The generator inlet box by Reliance, my utility knife, a pair of strippers, um, this, where did it go? Oh yeah, this one right here, actually somebody recommended this to me. It's a Lennox 9-in-1 uh, screwdriver because I'm always looking for one and they said this one's pretty cool because you get like 9-in-1. So I'm gonna be using this. So that's pretty much what I use. My impact driver, my unit bit, step bit with my drill and then the little things that I showed you. So let me wait for this to cool down and then we're gonna be wiring the rest of it up. And I put some black electrical tape, like just around the sharp edges or whatnot. I smoothed it all out with the step bit. And I did that just because there is no connector that is thick enough with the thread that'll come from the back all the way to the front. So this is like 
plan B or the best option that you have, you want to protect this wire as much as you can. So you just take your uh, SO cable, 6 gauge, that's what I have. You can use 8 gauge. If I had to go back, I'd probably use 8 gauge again just because 6 is a little bit thick. But if you have a lot of electrical consumption in your trailer, then you want to go bigger being 6 gauge. So what I do is just literally bring it in through the, through the hole that I drilled, just like that. And then down here, just let me make sure that I uh, fix it correctly. That way it has enough play where I can strap it down to the bottom. So give me two seconds. My goodness, that was a close call. This is literally as much extra as I have on this side. I should have given a little bit more, but this will work just because everything that I use on here is really close uh, to it. And you don't want to leave that much here because it'll all just bundle up inside. So this is what I have to work with. All right, so this is kind of how it's gonna look, just like that. But first, I'm gonna take my utility knife and I'm just gonna score it and skin the wire right here. So I just lightly, you wanna do it lightly because you wanna make sure you don't cut the cable underneath. You, you cut the insulation just a little bit and then that'll be able to, to pick, it, pick it so you can take it back like that. And then you just kind of go around in a circle in the back that's how you skin these big wires so you just take it like that you just got to be careful not to go too deep because you can skin the wire underneath so that's one of the things you really got to make sure of is when you skin this wire back just kind of tape tap it down in there making sure that you don't go too deep into the insulation being this black part of the wire Worst case scenario, you nick the cable, you wanna just put electrical tape on it. So that's how that's gonna look like that. And then it has these little fur things on there. You just wanna take those off. As such, just like that. And just like that. Hopefully you guys were able to see that. That's how I skinned this wire back. And let's see if I can get you closer. Just right there. So I skinned it back and now I have all my three cables here being my power, which is your black wire or it could be any color. You have your white wire, which is your neutral, and then you have your ground. Those are the three cables that are gonna give you your 120 power. So with that, we take our the back of the generator inlet, inlet box made by Reliance. Again, the part number is PB50. And then you just slide it right in. There's a knockout right here that you take off, right there, half inch knockout. I had used it previously for a demo that I did. So then you just put it just like that. And then we're gonna take our impact driver right here made by Milwaukee, a little impact driver. This guy right here, I use it daily. And one thing to know is that these stainless steel screws, uh, I think they're number 12, three quarter, self-tapping. Whew, beautiful things. Um, hard to find too right now for some reason. They're really hard to find, so I'll link them in the description. I found them, found them on Amazon. They have a little bit of a bigger head. So uh, it's called the, the Big Phillips. That's what we call it. So you take it and you change it, the tip out and the edge. And since they're, they're self tappers, you're just able to literally put it where you want it. And kind of screw it in like that. Let me do the other one. That one didn't grab too well, to be honest. Grabbed on that side, but it didn't grab well. Let me see what's wrong with this. All right, so here's what I had to do. I had to not use this bottom one for some reason. It wasn't grabbing really well, so it was leaving my box kind of loose. So I used this top one right there. This one fit well. This one was the only scallywag that was giving me issues. So I had to, since they're, like I said, that's why I love the self-tapping option on here, is that it was literally self-taps into the box and it drills by itself. So that is how I drilled this. So now we secure this. So now we can secure the three cables onto the generator inlet plug. Okay, so on here, we have, our, like I said, the black wire, which is your power, your white wire, which is your neutral. These together make 120. And then you have your ground wire. 
uh, I do get this question a lot in the comments is do you put a ground rod? Ooh, where's my face? Do you get a ground rod? And ground rods are usually used at a house uh, and your electrical meter, they get buried about 10 feet into the ground and then that's what provides ground in the house. Obviously we can't do that when we're building a food truck because we can't put a ground rod to the ground. So no, there is no ground rod on a electrical panel in a food truck, just so you guys know. But this is what we have to work with here. These three cables right here. Let's try to get as close as we can so you guys can see everything that I'm doing. Uh, and here with my green wire, I'm going to take my strippers, wire strippers, that's what they call it. And then I'm just going to skin this wire back as such. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. it is just like that and then I'm gonna take my wire nut and I'm gonna wire nut, wire nut these together that's gonna be for my ground my green which is my ground wire I would love to have a bigger wire nut here Ow, but this will do the trick actually I switched and I got a bigger wire nut from a brown to a red, just because it has more capacity on it, that you can fit the bigger wires on here. All right, so we have our six gauge wire right here. This is, this wire strip, ah, stupid mosquitoes. <laughs> You're gonna eat me alive out here. All right, so this, these wire strippers are a little bit uh, on the smaller side. The biggest they fit is eight gauge wire. So you have to be a little bit creative when you're cutting these, these wires right here just because this is six gauge wire. So you're getting to a more, I guess you could call it heavy duty wire. You can get stripped back still. You just gotta kinda skin the insulation and then just skin it back as you guys saw there. And then we're gonna take the nine and one Lennox that we have here. And then on the back of this generator inlet box, we have the lettering W, which is your white. You have the green which is there, but we hooked this up already with the wire nut, and then you have either Y or the X. That's how you get your um, 240. If you have two powers, like a red and a black, then you would connect them both right here, and that'll give you 240. If you just have one, you either pick, you either pick Y or X. There's no right or wrong, as long as you connect everything the same, being the plug that goes to your generator. You gotta make those the same. That's the only stipulation that I can give you. I'll give you the X because my daughter's name starts with an X. So I'll pick the X and then I'll pick the W and I'll take that off there. So let's connect this up right there. They have a flathead screwdriver on the side and it just opens up as you twist it. There's a clamp in here that opens up. So let me connect this really quick. Uh, if you guys can see there, I put the white, I haven't tightened it up yet, so I just kind of stabbed the white into the back of the plug there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the black. So I have the white there. I, I stuck it in or stabbed it in the back of that plug. And then I'm going to take my screwdriver and tighten it down as such. And then that'll tighten up the W, which is the white on there. So let me do that really quick. And now we're going to take the black wire right here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take it right into the X side right there and then it should be opened up wide enough with the clamps. You want to make sure you don't get any of these little furs around because then if they make contact with the box then it can short out. So you want to make sure you get all these little furs, these little copper furs right inside. So there we go. I have the black cable and then you just kind of slide it in as such like that. And then we're gonna tighten that up as well. Like I said, that's on the X terminal. So when we plug and make our cables, we'll make sure that we use the X terminal as well. So there you go, that's how we connect this like that. And then we just bring this around up here And then we close it up. 
And then we do that. And there you go. There is how your generator inlet plug is gonna get wired up. Hopefully that helped you out. I tried to record as much as I can. These mosquitoes are eating me alive, literally. I'm swatting them away. But that's your Reliance generator plug that will power everything inside your food truck. Any questions, please let me know. Next time we're gonna be able to finish everything up inside. Um, we got the concession window now, we have the hood in now, and we also have the water tanks in now. So pretty much we have everything that we need to build this food truck, this mobile kitchen on wheels, food trailer, anything you wanna call it and anything you wanna do with it, uh, your uh, imagination can go wild with anything you wanna make in here. So that's gonna be our main distribution point right here that's gonna connect to our generator. So thank you for watching again. Frank Baltierrez with the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck 2.0 and uh, Share the videos, subscribe, and comment here in the videos because I answer each and every one of these comments myself.